Welcome to TFI Cat Tips. Right, this is not a tutorial as such, it's a tip. It's a bit of guidance, it's a recommendation, if you will, on what to do next. What to do next, right? So you, I can't speak for everybody who's watching this, but most people who come to my channel, right, they want to know about, in my case, Inventor. So they're a beginner, they want to know more. So they find a tutorial channel, they learn their stuff, and then at some point in the future, you will outgrow the tutorial channel, right? You'll learn. The whole point of you watching tutorials is to learn. You've learned. What next? Well, in most people's cases, they're looking to learn a skill to help them get a job, right? You need to obviously know more about just software to get a job in that industry, obviously. But that's the point of it. You're learning from a tutorial channel to then find a job. So let's talk about that a little bit. So you sit in front of an employer and you're like, yeah, I know, I know Inventor. I know, it's not just Inventor, Revit, Max, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, it could be anything. And you're sitting in front of that employer and you're like, yeah, I know all about this program. I can use it proficiently, no problem whatsoever. I'm an expert at it, I've used it for years. Would you expect that employer to believe you? Even if you were to just say, I've actually self-taught myself, I'm up to speed on it. Would you expect them to take you on over somebody else? Would you believe somebody, if you don't know them from Adam, they sit in front of you and they're asking for a job, they're asking to come into your company, you, you're you going to pay this person and all the responsibilities that go with that. Would you believe them off the back of them just saying that they know how to use this software? Probably not, probably not. So to get around that, there's a number of ways to get around that, right? So there's the first one's the obvious one, which is a training course, right? You go on a proper training course, which is in most people's cases, right? If, if you're watching a tutorial channel, a, tr a training course was probably out of the question because they're not cheap. They're really not cheap. And the downside of a training course as well, and this is, it's up for debate and it's arguable and that kind of stuff, but this is speaking from experience because I've been an Autodesk training instructor for years, like nearly 10 years I was delivering training courses in a proper Autodesk training center. And I got countless people through the door on my training courses who had absolutely no interest in being there. None whatsoever, just didn't give a shit weren't interested. So they'd sit, in the, they'd sit on the course and they'd just fiddle all day, just watching, and looking on the internet, not listening, not paying attention. They don't care for many reasons. Sometimes it's, well, in most cases, it was because they got sent on the course by their employer and they didn't need to know about this program for the purposes of their job. Or the person was close to retirement and they were just like, oh, I've been sent on the course, I'm retiring in a year's time, I'm not really interested. Just, uh, just don't mind me. <laughs> I'm like, all right then. <laughs> I can't make you stay. I can't make you learn. So fair enough. But when they walk out the door at the end of the four days or however long the training course was, they will get a certificate saying they've attended a training course. The exact same certificate as somebody who worked their flipping balls off for four days and really dug into it. So that training certificate, in some cases, doesn't really mean much. But it's still a training course, and training's training, obviously. So, but so this training course, the second way that employers kind of verify what somebody's good at or not good at is, they sit them and they sit them in front of a workstation during the interview and say, right, model that, and they'll watch them do it. But then that, of course, requires the employer having a knowledge of Inventor, doesn't it? I suppose, and it's hassle for the employer. It's an extra thing they've got to do for all these people that come through the door. So it's it's just, you know, there's issues with that sort of stuff. And the third one is the Autodesk Certification Scheme, which is what I'm here to talk to you about. The Autodesk Certification Scheme. And if your first reaction is the Autodesk Certi for what now? Well, then that's kind of why I'm doing this, because it's it's been going, right? And this might come as of a surprise to some people. It's been going for about seven or eight years and if you've not heard of it after seven or eight years, then there's been a huge failing. And I know for a fact that has actually, there's been a huge failing in its, its adoption. It's a global thing as well. It's not like it's just in certain parts of America or the UK or Europe. No, it's a global thing. And the whole point of the certification scheme is that Autodesk created uh, this scheme with the intention of certifying users as being professionals at using their software. So Autodesk would... would um, appoint certification centers, right? And they're normally CAD suppliers, right? It could be educational institutions like universities or whatever, but on the Autodesk website, I'll put a link in the description down below so you can go and look at the webpage, but you'll find a certification center. You'll pay a small fee, and I say small fee, it's still a relatively, it's still a, it's still a lot of money, and it's a couple of hundred pounds, right? So you're talking hundreds of dollars, but not like excessively. 
you pay this fee, you'll go to the certification center and you'll be sat in exam conditions. So you'll be in a room, in a workstation, on a PC, which you can't tab out of and go to Google and look at stuff. You've got an, you've got a, what's called a proctor there where you'll, that person will monitor the exam so they can't you can't cheat. They'll make sure people aren't cheating. And you'll sit an exam. You'll answer some extremely difficult questions on the software. So in our case with Inventor, it'll be questions such as, you, you've created a sketch, you've clicked the line button, uh, you've drawn a line, you've then pressed the point button. At, on what types of objects can you place a point? Endpoints, midpoints, vertices, uh, intersections, you know, them, them sort of thing. Things which you'll kind of, after time, with experience, you'll you'll kind of have it in your head that you can or can't do these things. But as a complete beginner, as a somebody who's never used the software before, there's no chance that, of them answering the questions. Other questions will be, they'll, they'll give you a drawing of a, of a model, and they'll say, model that up. Model it up from these dimensions, and then tell us what the end volume of the part is. And again, if you've done it wrong, even by a millimeter of one dimension, the volume will be completely thrown off for the part once it's finished, and then you'll get the question wrong. So you've got to do it right. So it's extremely difficult to pass this exam. So once you've passed the exam, you will then get a certificate to say that you're a certified professional, but you'll also go onto a central database, an Autodesk database, which um, alongside all the other cert certified professionals in the world. So an employer can, if the certificate alone isn't enough, they can then search for you on the Autodesk website. And if your name's there, then they know that you've passed the exam. And it's all legit and it's all credible. So it sounds great, doesn't it? It sounds perfect. What's the problem with it? The problem with it is Autodesk. <laughs> it's Autodesk. They've just done a shocking job of promoting it. They've kind of what what Autodesk do is they go through bursts of of interest right they go through periods of of promoting something and then it just tails off and goes quiet and everybody that I've spoke to about this in the past in different places in the world in different companies in each region I've yet I've not once spoke to somebody just out the blue randomly about certification and they've heard of it it's never happened. It's been news to everybody, even to this day. The company that I'm working in now, I can go to anybody who's used, used an inventor, and they've used an inventor for years, and I'll say, have you heard of, not done, have you heard of the certification program? And they'll be like, nah, never heard of it. What's this? What's it about? What do I do? They're interested. Obviously, they're interested because it's it's a win-win for, for them. They sit an exam, they get a certificate, and it helps them get either a pay rise or a, or a better job. I mean, it, it, it's helpful for them. So they want to know about it. What's the problem with it, though? Well, I think that last statement has probably hinted to what the problem is with it. Employers, it's a double-edged sword for an employer, right? It's useful for an employer because if they get a candidate walk through the door who's certified, then they know that this person is credible and then they, they are a safe bet. They can bring them on board and they don't have to train them up. They can just hit the ground running with the software and use it straight away. So it's a problem solved, right? And for the candidate, it helps them achieve that, right? It helps them achieve getting a, a new job. The double-edged sword comes in with employers and their existing staff. Because as an employer, if you, if you send all your staff or if you allow your staff to go on this certification exam, you pay for it. I mean, hell, you pay for them to go on this certification exam. And then your, your staff member comes out passing 100 percent, whatever all scores passed gets the certificate what's to stop them saying hey screw you man i've got this i can get a pay rise somewhere else i can leave straight away walk into another job give me a pay rise or i'm off yeah that's the problem with it <laughs> employers don't really want people to to pass this exam because it's going to make them too big for the boots and they could potentially go and sort off somewhere else and it gives them a headache so it's kind of an issue that's not really autodesk's fault the, the employer could pay for staff to go on this certification and put in clauses, you know, if you do leave within three years, you, you have to pay back the fees or something like that. I don't know. There's, so you could put in something like that. But there are obviously, you know, sensitive issues around that sort of thing. Other problems that, that, have got, that Autodesk have with this certification is, I mean, if you just look at the website, I've put the link in the description of this video. But if you look at their website, all the links are all from 2013. So it's, it's it's like they had a burst of promotion with it and then they just stopped and lost interest with it. They've kept it going, but they haven't actively promoted it or updated any of their uh, peripherals since. So 
and also the, we're in now we're in product gen 2016 but they haven't released a 2016 exam we're still on 2015 so the exam that you will sit will certify you for 2015 which is the last release so Autodesk are like seriously lagging behind with the certification exam. But if you're thinking to yourself, well, what's the, well, why are you promoting it? Well, it's still useful. If you look at my introductions for all of my videos, I've, I've obviously passed the exam, but it, I passed it in 2013. So my product certification was for Inventor 2013. 2014 exam came out practically just before 2015 was going to be released. So I thought, well, what's the point in sitting the 2014 exam? 2015's coming out, I'll wait for that exam. 2015 came out, and Autodesk didn't release the 2015 exam again for ages. And then 20, then I'm thinking, well, I'll wait for 2016 exam to come out. And then it doesn't. And then you're like, for fuck's sake, when, when should I actually do this exam? So now I'm of the opinion, I'll just, just do it. I haven't done it because I just haven't, frankly, had time. And I've got to pay for it myself. So I'm going to sit the next exam that comes out. When the 2016 exam comes out, or if the 2017 exam comes out soon after 2017 is released, I'll do that one. But... Don't wait for the, don't do what I did, make a mistake and wait for the new exam to come out because they're just so slow at releasing the exams. But the problem with the exam, the problem with the certification at the moment is awareness, but that can all be f resolved by just promoting it. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm hoping to achieve from this video is just to promote it a bit more, make employers aware of it and make more people aware of it. The more people that sit the exam, the more the word will spread. It's That's the problem with it at the moment is people aren't spreading the word. Very few people have heard of it. And um, it's not getting through to employers because if you, it's like you know if at the moment because a lot of employers haven't heard of it. If you were to go to an interview and you were to say to an employer, "I have a cert, I'm a certified professional inventor," the chances are they'll just be like, it "Doesn't really mean anything to me." And then you're gonna have to explain it to them, and then it's down to that particular individual you're explaining it to to either believe what you're saying, are they interested in believing what you're saying, and it's on them to then go and research it. Have they got time to research it? Do they want to research it? Or shall they, or, or will they just take on somebody that's got a training course instead? So there's some issues with it. It's like somebody, it's like, you know, if the, if the employer hasn't heard of the exam, it's the, it's kind of in a bizarre way, the same as somebody sitting in front of them with a with a degree from the University of Wa Cha Ching in Papua New Guinea and saying, hey, I'm, I've got a degree from Wa Cha Ching in engineering from Papua New Guinea. And they'll be like, yeah, doesn't really apply over here. Never heard of it. No idea what you've learned. Doesn't really apply. <laughs> Soz. <laughs> it's kind of like that because they haven't heard of it. So it doesn't really mean anything to them. So it doesn't, you know, it needs to be credible. Anyway, that's uh, that's what it's all about. So go and check it out. If anything, just go and look at what the costs are. Get in touch with your local certification centre. Find out how much it's going to be. Think about sitting it, but just beware, you do need to really know your stuff before you do sit the exam. It's not like you can, you know, hey, I can I can create a sketch and I can extrude something and I modeled my keyboard, you know, I can do that. You need, a, I would say, you need a good six to 12 months of solid use on the application before you can realistically think about passing the exam. But if you do pass the exam and you fail it, most certification centers will let you resit it straight away. Um, it depends on the certification center. Some let you sit it free of charge, resit it free of charge. Um, some will make you pay for it again, but you don't lose any. You, you lose a bit of money, obviously, but you don't. It, you don't have like a credit rating where it's, it goes against your name that like you failed it. Nothing like that. There's nothing to lose in that respect. Uh, but just have a think about it. The Autodesk certification scheme. It's applicable to most of their flagship products, Vault excluded, uh, like AutoCAD, Revit, Max, Maya. Uh, I think Maya. Uh, through Civil 3D Inventor, obviously. I don't know what else they do it on, but uh, the certified professional exam, it's called. Go and check out the website and go and look at what it's all about.